Isaiah chapter 66. And I don't need to tell you what the 66th book of the Bible is. Revelation. Thus saith the Lord, The heaven is my throne, and the earth is my footstool. Imagine how big the God we have, that this, this big planet earth that we have, and he counts it as his footstool. Footstool is a little tiny thing compared to a seat. Where is the house that ye build for me? Build unto me. Where's where is the temple? Gone. And where is the place of my rest? Gone. For all those things has my hand made, and all those things have been, saith the Lord. But to this man will I look. Even to him that is a poor and of a contrite spirit, and trembleth at my word. You want God to look at you? You got to be poor. You got to be in contrite. You got to be one that fears the word. What do you do when you change the word of God? Think about that. You're not trembling if you're changing. I'd be afraid to change the word of God. He that killeth an ox as if he had slew a man. He that sacrificed a lamb as if he cut off a dog's neck. He that offered an oblation as if he offered swine's blood. He that burneth incense, we read this last night, as if he blessed an idol. Yea, they had chosen their own ways. And their soul delighteth in their abomination. For everything that is rightly spoken in this verse, they do it wrong. Their heart is not right into it. Their motives is not clean. They're just going to church because going to church. But they'd rather be somewhere else. Watching the time. Daydreaming. I also will choose their delusion. And will bring their fear upon them. Imagine you having a particular fear in your life or something and God bringing it upon you. Bringing their fears upon them. That would that's something you ought to fear, because you didn't tremble at the word. You trembled at other things, and God will have what you trembled at come to be. Because when I called, none did answer. You think about the public ministry, all the people that do not answer. And one day God will give them their fear. And the worst fear they can have be in absence of God not even knowing it. Being absent in combination of God in the burning hell. And never never able to get out. Though they don't fear it. The greatest fear for most men who are lost is death itself. That's why medical profession makes the most money. They'll pay anything they can pay to, to extend their life, to get rid of the pain. When I spanked, they did not hear. You, you, you preach to them for 45 minutes and the only word they get out of the whole thing is hell. 45 minutes of, of words... A verse in the Bible quoted several times. I open up with the same verse every time we're there. And all they hear is the word hell. They don't hear. But they did evil before my eyes. Imagine a person saying they're a Christian. Oh yeah, I'm a Christian. I used to do all that. And I'm sitting over there laughing with them just as much as... And choose that in which I delight not. I, God delights in the Lord Jesus Christ. Hear the word of the Lord. Plain and simple. Ye that tremble at his word. Okay. Your brethren that hate you. Jews. 
Isaiah writing to Jews. But it can also be the, the Christians with their family. That cast you out for my name's sake. They throw you out because you're in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, not a religion. Said, let the Lord be glorified, but he shall appear to your joy, and they shall be ashamed. When the Lord appears to me for my joy, these people are not going to go in the rapture. They're going to be <clears throat> left behind. If I can use that word now. They'll be ashamed when the Lord comes for his bride. The voice of the voice of noise from the city, the voice from the temple. Well, in Isaiah's time there is a temple. A voice of the Lord that rendereth recompense to his enemies. Well, that's at the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's the temple. There's the city. Revelation says you know, they're, they're, they're in agony, they're in defeat, and they're still cursing the God. Before she travaileth, she brought forth. Before her pain came, she was delivered of a man-child. Who has heard such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall the earth be made to bring forth in one day? Or shall a nation be born at once? For as soon as Zion travaileth, she brought forth her children. Shall I bring to birth, and not cause to bring forth, saith the Lord? Shall I cause to bring forth, and shut the womb, saith thy God? Rejoice ye with Jerusalem, and be glad with her. All ye that love her, rejoice for joy with her. All ye that mourn for her, that ye may suck, and be satisfied with the breast of her consolation, that ye may milk out, and be delighted with the abundance of her glory. And that milk is is the most uh, nutritious, most satisfying, the most of, a, of an infant to desire. There is to be nothing else but the mother's milk. For thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will extend peace to her like a river, and the glory of the Gentiles like a flowing stream. Then shall ye suck, you shall be born upon her sides, and be daddled upon her knees. And Israel is likened to a little child, taken care of, being fed, and being played with. As one whom his mother comforteth, so will I, God, comfort you, and ye shall be comforted in Jerusalem. You want a Bible verse that shows the mother motherhood of God? There it is right there. God says, as a mother takes care of her child, I will take care of Israel. So when you say the expression, mother of God, no. That's a false statement. Mary gave birth to the human side of the Lord Jesus Christ. She didn't give birth to God. The, 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 the eternal part of Jesus, Jesus Christ was forever. She gave birth to the one that would die about 33 half years old. Try to explain that one. You can't explain the Trinity. It's too hard. And when ye see this, your heart shall rejoice. Israel again, like into a little child. And when you see it, that little child growing up with God taking care of him and that child being feed, fed like it should be fed, and the Gentiles taking care of instead of throwing missiles and shooting and trying to steal the land. Your bones shall flourish like a herb, and the hand of the Lord shall be known towards his servants. The hand of the Lord ain't known today. His indignation towards his enemies. In the millennium, you're going to be, you remember when the Lord came? You saw what he did to all those people? I'm glad I took care of the nation of Israel. For behold, the Lord will come with fire. Uh-oh. And with his chariots like a whirlwind. 
to render his anger with fury, his rebuke with flames of fire. There's that baby that lied in the crib. There is that baby that the little shepherds came to. Problem is, he grew up. What about that blasphemous Bible that says, where it changes, where in the Bible Jesus says, if any man be angry with his brother, here Jesus Christ is angry. For there is a cause to be angry. For by fire and by his sword comes out of his mouth, will the Lord plead with all flesh, and the slain of the Lord shall be many. They that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the gardens behind one tree in the midst, eating swine's flesh, we talked about that last night, and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together, saith the Lord. That mouse was an unclean animal. For I know their works and their thoughts. Not mind what they're doing, but what they're thinking. It shall come that I will gather all nations and tongues, Armageddon, and they shall come and see my glory. We'll gather them all for destruction at the second advent, and then those that are the sheep nations, those that are Israel, those that are Christians, shall be gathered to the Lord Jesus Christ in New Jerusalem. And behold that glory. I will set a sign among them. I will send those that escape of them unto the nations, to Tarshish, Paul, and Lud, and draw the bow to Tubal and Javan, to the isles afar off that have not heard my fame, neither have seen my glory, and they shall declare my glory among the Gentiles. A testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. They shall bring all your brethren for an offering unto the Lord out of all nations upon horses, and in chariots, in litters, upon mules, upon swift beasts, to my holy mountain Jerusalem, saith the Lord. As the children of Israel bring an offering in a clean vessel unto the house of the Lord. The Gentiles are going to be bringing the, the, the Jews any way possible to Jerusalem. So it's not the people getting rid of the Jews and, okay, let's have a party. It's the people say, okay, get in this wagon. We'll, we'll drive you there. Get in my cart. Get on my horse. And we'll bring you, not send you, we will bring you to the Lord Jesus Christ. And since you're Jewish people and you are of God, we're going to go with you and get the blessing. I will also take of them for priests and for Levites. So the priests are coming back. The Levites are coming back. All priests are Levites, but not all Levites are priests, saith the Lord. For as the new heavens and the new earth, notice the heaven is plural. The three heavens are going to be back, or maybe more. But the new earth, there's one earth, which I will make. You find this in 2 Peter 3, 5 to 13. God's going to remake the earth, shall remain before me, saith the Lord. So shall your seed in your name remain, Israel, the Jewish people. The heavens and the earth are going to go away, but not Israel. What about America? Be gone. Germany, gone. China, gone. Russia, all these nations, oh, ISIS, gone. Israel, hallelujah. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another, that's a Jewish month, 30 days, lunar calendar, from one Sabbath to another, another Sabbath, seven days, shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. They shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. 
There is that open fiery pit down in the Dead Sea. Are you going to see them burning? You take your little child, you walk over there and say, see those people down there, son? Yeah, those are people that did not do what God told them to do. Isn't that a very good lesson? Yes, Daddy. Now, something that Jesus said, something that the Holy Spirit said, something that Isaiah wrote is found in Mark chapter 9, verse 44. As far as the Jehovah Witnesses, their worm shall not die. A man that is in hell is, oh, sorry, I said hell twice today. Sorry. A man that is in hell, I told you heard with hell, didn't you? What about the hell with that? How about go to hell? How about all hell? And hello. Can't say hello no more. Hell in it. Hell, oh. Hello. Their worm shall not. That's all you heard. Love you. Oh, you said hell. Their worm shall not die. You know what the essence of man is? He's a worm. Do you have you ever seen a video or a picture or actually seen under a microscope what the man's seed is? It's a worm. And if you check these passages out, it looks like a man that's in hell, his body, soul, and spirit is a worm. Neither shall their fire, how about that baptism, shall be baptized with water and with fire, John said, shall neither their fire be quenched. There's the baptism of fire that you don't want. And they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. And that's in the millennium. But that is spoken out in the new earth and new in the new heavens too. There might be a possibility that we might be able to go to the lake of fire somewhere, wherever it is. And I don't know. I know at least in the millennium you'll be able to look over and see. But what you see here is you see the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ. And those that rebelled against the word of God are not allowed in the kingdom like Adam and Eve were taken out of the garden. He said, for eating eating a fruit? No, they re, they rebelled against the word of God. That's what, and that's what these people done. They've got the written word. They know what's an abomination, and they still do their own thing. People are told to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And they do their own thing. That is rebelling against the word of God, and they are cast out of God's presence. And they're put into the baptism of fire. For all eternity. A man doesn't go to hell because of adultery. He doesn't go to hell because of stealing. He goes to hell because he rejected Jesus Christ for the payment of his sins. He's a sinner. He needs a payment. And the payment has already been made. And God said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. And you do whatever you want to do. Meanwhile, in the millennium, that nation of Israel started off in infancy. And God becomes their motherly type figure. And for once, you're going to see Gentiles taking care of them and bringing them and uplifting them. And God is going to be joyful with his people. If they're going to have a new spirit, they're going to have a new heart. They're not going to be stiff-necked anymore. And rejoicing and going to the temple and, and anxious to go there. 
and then we go off into eternity. The great white throne judgment is not spoken of in Isaiah 66. You go from the millennium, 21, right into the new heavens and earth, 22. But there's a cleansing of all. Because there are people whose name are written in, the land, in, the, in that land's book of life that will go into heaven. In Revelation 20. And there are people who are in hell who need to be judged to cast into the lake of fire. And then after that, Revelation records the new heavens and the new earth. And that's eternity. 